Um, yeah, I want to see the boy in the heron this week. Um, and I really want to uh, talk about it a little bit. I'm going to be as spoiler free as possible. Um, yeah. So we're not going to get into any of like detailed plot stuff. But yes. <laughs> um, uh, saying that it's about Miyazaki's childhood totally makes sense and will not surprise you. Um, it is very, uh, it starts with a bang. Like it, you, you, you'll start and you'll go, okay, he's going, he's, he's going with this as, as the beginning. Hmm. Um, and then it starts weaving in this story. Now, a while back, we talked about how, or I, I talked with some friends about how the, re the initial reviews of Boy and the Heron were kind of mixed. Um, and one review said, um, this is either a portal fantasy, like a, a very by the books portal fantasy, or Miyazaki is doing something so subtle I can't tell what it is. Imagine. <laughs> it is both of those things. <clears throat> okay. At the same time. Um, okay. I think Miyazaki does a great job here of telling a very um, engaging story where you are pulled along with it for the whole two hours of it, um, while also telling a heavily symbolic story. Um, I could not parse a lot of the symbolism of this movie, but I could tell they were all symbols, right? I could tell I was things were being layered on. And more importantly, this is not one of those things where it's a portal fantasy, so, you know, the boy has a pen knife in the real life, and then he goes in and he picks up a sword, right? You know, it's right, not yeah. that kind of a symbolism where clearly everything in the fantasy world is an equivalent one-to-one -one with the real life. Right. There's just a lot of weird things going on in this world that he ends up in. Mm. Huh. Um, and, and again, I'm sure a lot of that makes sense after five or six rewatches. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was going to say, you know, we'll watch it in the theater first. Yeah. And then we'll go out there. That was great. What's it about? Ah, it, it was great. <laughs> exactly. You know? Yes. <laughs> now, is it a rewatch or is it one of those things where there's the cultural nuances that the rewatch will be because you looked up all the cultural yeah, nuances I mean, that you like rewatching it. Well, you won't get it unless you happen to be immersed in the cultural nuances. I, I think a bit of both of those. So, for example, um, uh, we talked before when this when the movie was announced, Miyazaki said he was inspired by the real book, How Do We Live? Or How Do You Live? Right. Um, which is a, a, a book written to, like, uh, tween boys in, like, the 1930s, um, with, which talks about, like, here are some experiences this boy had, and here are some ways of thinking about this. Um, the main character in the movie receives that book as part of the plot mm. and reads that book. And I don't think this is a spoiler. Like there's like he, he reads it and it like zooms in on a page of that book and an illustration on that page. And it's just like, um, it's a very abstract illustration of just like a car, you know, going through the, uh, along the road. So clearly that means something. All right. Um, you know, clearly, like, that, that is a particular scene that Miyazaki is drawing your attention to that all of the Japanese folks who grew up reading that novel know what he's talking about and know what that is. For what it's worth, I've read the book. I went back. I can't find any scenes with the car in it. <laughs> <laughs> is the scene with the car Astra? Astra? So is it Astra from Astro Boy? Where he's in the car and he has the wreck and becomes. Oh Astro no, Boy. it's 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 not. <laughs> like oh yeah, yeah, that'd be that'd, that'd be cool, <laughs> like though. oh god. Yeah, that'd be very cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, no, so it's that so kind of it stuff. Has a good the, nod. The, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, there's definitely specific cultural things. But also to that point, um, hmm, how much to, to talk about? Um, yeah, how not to spoil? Yeah. Um, there's a scene where the main character um, enters a house and they spend a long time going through and showing you the different rooms of the house. And it is very clear you know, now, I mean, as I was watching the film, I was like, now I understand why they were showing all the, the rooms of the house. But that is also a, a thing about just not only Japanese culture, but also Japanese culture at the time. It is very much set in like 1930s wartime Japan. 
Ah, um, okay. And like explicitly, like it says, you know, you know the, the Asia Pacific War had started X years ago, you know, et cetera. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so yes, those things are there too, of being about like Japanese culture and how things were changing. I think it is, it is almost certainly partially about um, how Japan was modernizing. Um, it being, I can say this, um, the main character, the boy, the, 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 the boy, titular boy, um, is a young man going through a lot of changes in his life, um, and trying to deal with those and trying to figure out what is the right way of dealing with those. Um, and he is doing so basically alone. He doesn't really have friends or things like that to really connect with. And his parents are, um, interestingly, um, very interested in him and very eager to take care of him, but they set up why he can't really relate to either of them. Um, again, no spoilers, but it kind of isolates him. And, uh, and that's kind of why the movie becomes so interesting because how does this boy do this? Speaking so not about, isolated like Grave of the Fireflies. So right, everybody right, is yeah. gone. No. And no, no, it's no. just him and, yeah. you know, trying to struggle to figure out things. Okay. Mm -hmm. no, no, yeah. No, he, he's, no, in a, no. he's in a new situation and he has to kind of deal with, okay, that hmm. um, having, having either no connections or connections that are completely new to him. And so he can't quite completely like you know, trust them or like give his heart over to these new people in his life kind of thing. Okay. Um, you know, they're there, but they're, they're strangers effectively. All right. Um, trust in that. Yeah. And, and trust issues. And, and that's also probably some of the symbolism of the movie of, you know, how do you come? In fact, I would argue not to spoilers. Um, the theme of the movie is how you come to find your community, how you come to find your family so to speak. Um, what does it mean to care for other people who are around you or close to you? What do those relationships look like? And can they be different? Right? Can you right. care for people in different ways? That kind of stuff. Okay. Um, and then like, how, how much do you have to commit to that? Right? Like, like, uh -huh. can, can you, 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 you cannot be closed hearted and still a member of a family in a functional way, right? Like there has to be right. some, you know, commitment take. to, yeah, yeah so some right. give and take yeah. and some yeah. like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give in this situation. So yeah. Hmm. Um, very interesting. Um, I'll say the poster is excellent in that the poster is also symbolic. Like what you see in that image is representative of stuff happening in the movie. And I think it's a nice connection of images there. Um, seeing the feather, yeah. him looking back, the, the weird hair, like all that is indicative of the movie. The little funky ghost or whatever yes, the heck the, the, the white thing he the, is. The Kodama in the lower left, right corner, yeah. basically. <laughs> and flying up on the right as well. Mm -hmm. so. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then Totoro appears and we learn about the Yokai War. Wait, what? No. Yeah. <laughs> I will and say then we see I, a boar uh, that's slithering with snakes and corruption. Oh, I good. believe oh there is a visual reference to every Studio Ghibli movie in this film. At least every Miyazaki movie. <laughs> wow. I was watching, I was like, okay, that feels like this moment from Totoro, this moment from Spirited Away, this moment from Okay, like like there's bits no, of all no, of them. Like um yes, yes. Um wow. damn. I mean, th there's a moment where he has to find somebody in the woods, and so he crawls into this little hedge circular hedge just like may and totoro um oh, wow you know it's just all these little bits and it's not like obvious but it's it's like definitely like you know using the same overall visual composition as that one shot <laughs> there's a caterpillar crawling through the bush with him and then there's an omu that's kind of walk <laughs> hey what are you saying? hold on there <laughs> In one corner, there's a little uh, Woody from Toy Story. You know exactly oh, <laughs> what. <laughs> yeah. So, any questions do you do you guys have for me about the movie? Like, what do you want to know? Of going all the Ghibli know? films that you have seen, mm. 
from what you would objective subject mm. sub, not object subjectively say favorite you know it as far as animation style and story depth and complexity and interconnectivity where does boy in the heron rate i'm gonna have to rewatch it mm, okay because watching it i will say there were times where i was like i have no idea where this is going and i'm kind of bored mm. but i trust miyazaki and it, okay. you know, it gets there um there were moments where i was like there, there's clearly a lot of symbolism going on but i'm just lost um mm. But the overall story, okay, I'll answer this a different way. I think Miyazaki's earlier movies were very clear and easy to follow. Okay. Right? Cagliostro, Nausicaa, all the right. movies. It may be many layers, but like, you know, you're you're on this train and it's moving from, you know, the first scene to the last. Okay. Um, his more recent movies are a little bit more meandering. Um, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a little bit more slow. It can be. It can go off on what feels like tangents at times. Like think how more Castle. nuanced. Would you say not, not just not just nuanced, just like the plot stops for a while, <laughs> and we deal with other things for a little bit, um, and then we, we go back. A lot of like B plots going on. You know, okay. um, yeah. the wind rises. A good example of this, where there's, there's a lot of stuff where it's like this doesn't really have anything to do with this other thing, but okay. Yeah. Um, which is fine. It's just it's a different, you know, different structure. Um, mm -hmm. Takahata's movies tend to be very much like you know, think um, think Wave of the Fireflies. In fact, that is not you know moving forward at a rapid pace from no. the beginning to the end. Bro. Right. Um, I think this movie does find the right balance between the two, but you kind of have to get there watching it. Like it takes a while for it to find that balance. Um, yeah. So do you think that the, the opening day, opening weekend mm. is just purely because it is Miyazaki and Ghibli? I and think that this is going to bear more mm. people going, ah, I have to see it twice. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope so. I think this is going to be one of those. This, I'll put it this way. This might be my favorite Miyazaki movie after I've watched it a couple of times and after I've come to wow. appreciate what he's doing. Okay. Mm. Like, I really oh, resonated wow. with a lot of things he was doing and the story he was telling. All right. All right. Cool. Would you, would you say on, on the um, Ghibli movies and his Miyazaki uh, movies are, mm. are, are basically, you know, fantastical elements and things yeah. and, and, you know, stuff like that. And, and, you know, it deals with, you know, socialism. Like, I mean, yeah. socialism, <laughs> communism. Uh, workers unite. No, um, but uh, but you know, it, it, just things of a fantastical nature. Sure. Yeah. The boy and the heron. Does it continue that? Is it more that? Is it less that? Does it, he find a a for once a balance? Because sometimes when you watch a Ghibli movie, you're just mm. like, okay, here we go, fantasy full ride, oh. then full stop in your reality. You're like, uh, okay, ow. You know, this is the most fantastical Miyazaki okay. movie I can think of. Oh wow! Okay, wow, and okay. yeah, that's and that's saying something. So, yeah. it, would yeah. you say that that might be something that is grabbing people and getting them into the movie, like like be, because these numbers are telling me that these yeah. it, the, that this is not just an anime crowd coming in and watching mm -hmm. an anime because we you know what Ghibli is. <laughs> but it's it's like actually people kind of like going because this is a very very intriguing art right here yep. that we're that we're looking at mm -hmm. that can appeal to a lot of different people who don't yeah. know anything about it mm -hmm. yeah. so would you feel that people are being grabbed in and and by the aspect of this fantasticalness yeah. of it because even the 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 title of the movie the boy and the heron has a yeah. quality to it that that mm -hmm. is a, a, approachable by a lot of people yeah, um, it's why I'm very glad they like that's not a Japanese title, right? You know, the Japanese title is "How Do We Live," which is a reference to the book, so everyone there gets it. Like, I'm so glad yeah. they went with the boy and the heron because it, you're yeah. absolutely right; it has that that weird thing. I don't know, but I suspect that. So Miyazaki does this smart thing. He did, does the same thing he did he did in Totoro, where weird fantastical stuff starts happening early in that movie, right? The sit sprites show right. up like. In, yeah three minutes yeah um 
and he, he does the same thing here where weird stuff starts happening really early, but it's very much in the real world. Um, uh-huh. And then it's not until the main character kind of, like you, you can tell very quickly what the portal is going to be. Um, and then once the, the boy's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to follow that path effectively. Um, it's an hour and a half of fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Gotcha. Okay. But he, gotcha. He's in that world for just whoa, um, doing stuff there. Um, and they're, they're, they bounce back to the real world stuff, so. but yeah, it's, it's very much that again, a little bit like Howl's, where like when, okay. she, when she goes to the to the, the castle, like she's mm-hmm. it's you're in that castle for basically for most of the story. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I think it has the advantage that because he does that very quickly, you're like, what's going on? Why why did that happen? Okay, okay, but now we're back to the real world, so I'm grounded. Right. So then, when another weird things come on, you're like, okay, now I know that's a weird thing. It's not just this world. Right. <clears throat> and then, as the more fantastical stuff happens, you start getting drawn into that. So I think it's it's better than a lot of other things where it's like real world, real world, real world, portal fantasy, where it feels kind of like this this this, this abrupt jump. <clears throat> but yeah, interesting. Yeah. I want to um, see it now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I will say it is probably one of his least, like, what I say, I think it's less approachable than, like, Spirited Away, for example. Okay. Because, you know, you start that, it's a girl in the back of a modern car. They're yeah. moving. She's feeling annoyed. And then this weird thing happens, right? Like, I think that's, that's, a, that's an easier kind of sell for the average person. Um, this is... 1930s Japan, <laughs> it's wartime, all that kind of stuff. So I think it's, it's a little less approachable for that reason. Um, and the fact that it kind of goes so heavy into the fantasy and the symbolism. But I think it, it does that very, very well. Well, it's an easy sell if you're 90 years old. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the 1930s. I remember that. <laughs> sure. Sure you do, Grandpa. All right, Grandpa. Take your pills. Pretty much. Um, but yeah, I was definitely impressed... Going in, I wasn't sure what I was going to get. Um, and I came out feeling like, wow, that was an amazing experience. Mm. And I, I, I want to sink my teeth more into it. Like, I want to I learn more. I want to understand more. I want to do that. And I will also say, I was talking about this on the, on the Discord. We have a Discord, by the way. Um, and I was saying, it is one of those movies that I, when I finished, I wanted to go back and watch it again. Nice. Right. It, it was very much that feeling. Okay. Yeah. Would you buy it on DVD? Uh, on Blu-ray, yes. Okay. Because, uh, you know, as in, like highest possible quality. Yeah. Definitely. Right. Okay. Oh wow! Like mm-hmm. no, no questions. Not like oh, I'd wait for it on sale. Like no, immediately available. You'd go out and buy it. Um. So I, I should admit, being who I am. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of movie that I will want to go back and analyze and like go back to that, you know, the third frame in the shot to okay. see what was going on there, right? Like th- this is also an analysis media for me. Right. Um, which you can't really do on streaming. Um, so th- there's that element of it, of it there. But yes, th- you know, to answer the, the the deeper question, yes, this is a movie that I would love to go back to every couple of years and like Okay. refresh myself on and and nice. have a copy of that right. I, I know i will have so not just oh i'll just go on to whatever streaming service and just watch it again it's like no i mm-hmm. i would have this to do the deep analysis that i want to do on it scene mm-hmm. by scene frame by frame if i needed to yep fair enough very good mm-hmm. okay wow, that's a that's a pretty impressive uh it's a pretty impressive nod to this film then right? yeah. yeah and it's one of those films that will reward that but like, you know, th- th- there will be things you'll notice. Of, oh, and now I get, get what he's doing there. So basically, and, and I'm not joking here. Basically, there will be people out there who are going to watch this and be like, I have a paper. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, there will be so many papers about this film. Yes, Chat yes, GBT. Yes, yes. Talk about this. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, 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 oh, I mean, you could subdivide this in so many different ways wow. and layer it. Right. Like, where is he going? What does he mean by that? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
actually to that point, that's a really interesting point. That the more I think about it, being set in the 30s in Japan, you have that angle as well. What is it saying right. about Japan? It's about what is it saying about him? What's it saying about being Miyazaki? You know, that is Miyazaki. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So Gosh, I want to go see it right now. <laughs> <laughs> The Wish I had thought more about it. I, I, it, it had flashed through my mind that we were going yeah. to be talking about things this weekend, and that's like I had yesterday. I could have well, done this. And in fairness, um, <sighs> the tickets became available like a couple of weeks ago, on like a Friday, and it was live on all the websites like Fandango and Regal, but you couldn't actually buy the tickets. Like you could go in, you could select the tickets, you could select the theater. When you went to select a seat, they would say unavailable. And it was like that all weekend. Wow. Okay. Weird. Okay. So something really weird going on. So I had to like come back every day and try it until finally on like the fourth day they went through. Uh, and again, on multiple different websites. So something really weird is going on there. Huh. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I hopefully will be able to find a way yeah. to see it then. <laughs> I hope so. Um, I don't want to rely on somebody's YouTube video where they're sitting in the audience. <laughs> no, 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 that is not the way to watch this bad, movie. <laughs> bad, bad. I also imagine the algorithm for YouTube would be like, "Oh, you're trying to no." no. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> Shut down. To that point, don't watch this movie that way, right? Like this is a movie that benefits from 1080p high quality experience. Like right. there's going to be a lot going on there that watching a, I remember when, um, um, uh, your name came out oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, there were, there was like a, a, you know, a, a cam rip from somebody in a theater and folks were like, just don't know like this. You're just, not going to, yeah, yeah. You know, this, this is not the right way to see this. You know, wait two weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, it's one um, of those things where it's like these films, now that we have them, appreciate the mm -hmm, fact that yeah. we have them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like getting a cam rip is, if it was never going to be released ever in your yeah. region, you know, there are arguments for like, sure. then you, the things that you have to do, I have to wait like two years to get it on yeah. you know, Blu ray. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, you, you do you. But if mm -hmm. you're in an area where it's in a theater, for the love of God, go see these things in a theater. <laughs> theater. Yeah. Because exactly. I, you know. Because it's much easier to watch them in the theater than going in the dealer's room and going to that one guy all the way in the back in the corner just goes, yeah, I got a copy. Yeah, <laughs> the one where the where the all the videos are in like greasy cardboard. Boxes. Right. There's like that back room that has the hentai curtain. Yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. Well, I, mean, like, I did. Does you know, this we talked in my region. Sure, sure it does. Sure. Well, it's like, mm -hmm. We talked about Mugen Train so much, and when it was finally available in the theater, I am mm -hmm. glad I did not go and watch it on DVD or Blu-ray mm -hmm. or or wherever. Because it was the experience of actually going and supporting this medium in a right. theater mm -hmm. that then hopefully my small part meant that somebody in corporate theaterdom said, yeah. Oh, hey, you know, people are actually going and watching this. Maybe we should actually, you know, get some more anime in here. Be like, mm -hmm. Yes, please. Yeah. The next Be part of that movie? Absolutely. Yeah. Not. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well, no, and, and it, this will make, you know, the next Hosoda film. Yeah. Right. You know, get a wider release. To that yeah. point, speaking of, I'm, I'm going to throw something else out here. I know this is like way at the end. When I say this is full of fantasy and, and symbolism, if somebody had told me that Miyazaki had decided to finish Satoshi Kon's final film, oh god, and it was this film, I would not have been surprised. What? It's that weird. Wow. Yeah, and it's that like symbolic that you know weird okay. things are happening in reality. Yeah, it oh, it, it, it goes wow. that far. Mm -hmm. It's paprika, but a boy. <laughs> oh God, no! Yeah. Wow, wow! Mm -hmm. Stop making me want to see this film, Brad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've already plussed it. You're plussed it extra. You plus ultra. Stop this, damn it! <laughs> 